to Nigeria now. Not very good news. Moody's investors over the weekend, uh, investor service downgraded Nigeria's long-term foreign and local currency as well as debt ratings further to junk territory. And that's the second time in less than four months. The latest downgrade, which is now at CAA1 from B3, is the country's lowest rating in 17 years. A statement from the Global Rating Agency says that the rating which comes with a stable outlook reflects the country's weakening fiscal and debt position, revenue woes, and excessive funding through the central bank's ways and means there we go again those ways and means they never leave us alone last october moody's downgraded nigeria's local and foreign currency long-term issuer ratings as well as its foreign currency senior unsecured debt ratings to b3 from b2 and place them on review for downgrade well let's find out the meaning of this we've been talking a lot about debt issue debt revenue issue debt servicing and now we have a downgrade from moody's we heard this not so long ago about ghana now it's come to nigeria well we have to tell us this uh, professor bongo adi uh, he's a professor of economics at lagos business school joins us virtually professor adi good morning uh, even though it's not good news for nigeria as we see this downgrade help us to understand exactly what this means thank you very much uh Ine. um well uh, i like it that you mentioned that this is not the first time but then uh it's the first time in 17 years that we're getting to this uh this uh a new law um, well, that is quite worrisome, but it's not entirely unexpected. We are at the eve of an election, um, okay, and then, um, you know, the ACM period has been very turbulent, especially when you consider the macroeconomic and the fiscal policy environment. So it's left a lot, those have left a lot to be desired in recent times. Uh, so Moody's um, rating, you know, uh, doesn't really say much that we haven't quite uh, uh, talked about, that we haven't quite dwelt on uh, in, in recent years, uh, in recent days, actually, in the media. If you've list, been listening to economists, especially th those that really understand what's going on, you would have um, heard them complain bitterly about the, the monetary, monetary policy regime as well as the fiscal you know, responses. So they've left a lot to be desired. Um, well, CAA1 rating means that we are further into the junk territory, meaning that we are not, we are not invested. I mean, our, our bonds, uh, our instruments are not uh, in, uh, investment grade. Okay, so uh, what that means is worsens our credit uh, situation. There. So if we are, uh, um, you know, looking towards raising uh, funds, uh, capital from the international market, we should be expecting to pay in very high um, you know, interest rates uh, because um, we're, we're very risky. So, well, we're still, still, we are lucky that we're still in the stable uh, you know, horizon in the sense that we, we are not yet at the risk of default of principal as well as interest. Uh, but what it means now is, is still that we will need to you know, cover a lot of uh, uh, funds to service our debt. Uh, debt servicing is gulping so much of government's independent revenue, uh, and, and then that means uh, if it increases any further, then we will find ourselves in a very difficult situation. But like I said, there is, um, I think, uh, there should be a light at the end of the tunnel in the sense that we are about, uh, you know, having a regime change. So, like I said earlier, uh, it's not entirely unexpected where we are according to Moody's rating. Uh, the eve of an election, uh, things are really uh, going in, in opposite direction. Of course, also globally, we have this surge of uh, in inflation, which has also ramped up infl um, interest rates all over. And then uh, global uh, central banks have also been really hard pressed to respond to the, uh, the, the very difficult and challenging situation over the past uh, year with uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which imposed uh, another round of, uh, you know, supply constraints on global economy. So we are not entirely, uh, our economy is not um, removed from what is happening over it. So th that contagion is also playing out here. So at least that gives us some kind of comfort that we're not alone. 
But again, I think we need to take respite in the in the in the in the, in the instance that we are the eve of an election, uh, which promises uh, no matter who wins the election, uh, I think we have a, a better a better response to some of these issues. So yeah, uh, it's worrisome, but I don't think that uh, it's enough uh, reason for despair on the Nigerian economy. All right, uh, thanks for your optimism there. But can we say that I mean just? It can be taken for granted that whoever wins, as you have said, that the situation will be better. Or are there steps to be taken if we have to deal with this and at least reverse the situation or, or this rating? Yeah, so, I mean, there are uh, steps to be taken. And I, I, I think you've listened also uh, to the, um, you know, the assessment of the manifestos of the three leading contenders to the presidency. And then uh, in that, we've seen that there is one particular case uh, that's uh, shown signs that uh, things will begin to really look, look up uh, if they really mount the mantle of uh, leadership in Nigeria. Uh, so I think, um, like everybody says, we have to be very careful in choosing who is our next uh, leader. But generally, um, if you look at the monetary policy uh, aspirations of the three manifestos, uh, they are pro-market, and then they've uh, made a commitment to you know, uh, stepping back on subsidy, uh, in fact, uh, total removal of the subsidy, and then non-apologetic about that. Um, and I think once that is done, and then of course, uh, commitment to fighting corruption, commitment to fighting all you have to to shore up government revenue. If these are done, and I, and of course, when you look at all those uh, those steps, uh, you, you should be should be in a position to tell who is better. Uh, you know, to, to execute that once uh, he mounts the rent. rent. So I, I'm not here to put for any candidate as such. But then we, we know who is in a better position to do all of that. And I think Nigerians need to be, uh, as everybody says, we, we, we really need to uh, uh, be, uh, vote wisely. Yeah. I think that's the first and necessary step to redeeming the situation. Yeah, okay. Voting wisely is one first step towards reversing the situation. Just before we let you go, Professor Adi, uh, we know now that the CBN has extended the use of the old Naira by 10 days uh, with the condition that after those 10 days, if you still have it, then you have to deposit it at the central bank by yourself. Uh, we, we've heard a lot of stories uh, from Lagos and outside Lagos. I've experienced some, also, I must say, over the weekend, it was really hard you know, to purchase, you know, little things. Uh, with this 10 days of extension, what do we expect? Uh, does it affect the economy, economic activities? Is it long enough? Is it short enough, you know, for the people to adjust to this uh, new Naira? Yeah, but, uh, you know, so the, the truth of the matter is that uh, even before now, um, people should have been, you know, um, because it's been a long time, uh, the central bank has been pushing towards the digitization of uh, payments and transactions in the economy. But as it is, you know, technology is always um, lagging behind some of those, uh, you know, uh, policies. So I think that's the major challenge. Um, yes, um, as expected, there will be those uh, kind of shocks for interim, in the interim. Uh, but uh, as uh, you know, I, I like the commitment of the central bank not to really, you know, give give uh, way uh, despite the pressure coming from the legislature. So um, this is something that needs to happen. Um, initially, I didn't support the, this move, but then listening to them and then seeing that over the you know since this policy has come, uh, we've seen that um, there's some level of stability uh, on the foreign exchange market as well as uh, on, on inflation. So let's see how it goes. Yes, people will experience, um, you know, that short-term, um, you know, discomfort, uh, that natural. But I, I believe that over time, we get used to it. Um, nobody would die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Professor Bungo, the Professor of Economics at Lagos Binesco. Thank you so much. Nobody dies, we pray. Thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.